When examining carrier-based aircraft closely, you might notice a small panel with three colored lights. These are typically found on the nose landing gear, as seen on the FA-18 or F-14 Tomcat. Some aircraft have this light positioned in different locations. The E2C Hawkeye has them recessed just ahead of the nose gear, while the older A7 Corsa had them built into its nose gear doors. Even the classic good old F4U Corsa featured them placed behind a small window on the leading edge of the wing. But what are these lights for and how are they used? In this video I'll explain their purpose and function. To better understand their role, we first need a quick theory lesson on the principles of flight. Lift is a force generated by the wings and partially by the fuselage, which keeps the aircraft in the air. If it equals the aircraft's weight, the flight is level. If it's greater, the aircraft is in steady climb. If it's less, the aircraft is in steady descent. Here's a lift force formula. Lift equals one half times air density, airspeed squared, the lift coefficient and wing area. The lift coefficient is determined by the shape of the aircraft and its angle of attack, the angle between the relative airflow and the wing's cord line. It is important to note that while there can be related, the angle of attack is not the same as aircraft pitch attitude. Pitch attitude is the relationship between the aircraft nose and the horizon. Now let's analyze the forces at play during a steady descent, such as the final approach using the FA-18 as an example. During the final approach phase, the aircraft must maintain a constant 3 degree glide path. This means the lift remains constant. Since the wing area, aircraft shape and air density are constant, we are left with only two variables – airspeed and AOA. According to lift formula, these two are inversely proportional. Higher airspeed requires a lower AOA, while lower airspeed demands a higher AOA. For the FA-18 there is a specific combination of AOA and airspeed, which equals 8.1 degrees and 135 knots. That ensures the ideal attitude for catching the arresting wire during recovery. To help pilots maintain this precise attitude, carrier-based aircraft are equipped with simple displays in the cockpit, usually integrated into the HUD. These consist of three lights, green, amber and red. The system activates when the landing gear is lowered. The top green light means the AOA is too high, indicating the aircraft is flying too slow. The bottom red light, the AOA is too low, indicating the aircraft is flying too fast. The middle amber light indicates the aircraft is on speed, which means the correct AOA and airspeed for the aircraft's current weight. With these lights in view, the pilot can quickly adjust the aircraft's attitude as needed. By now, you've likely guessed that the external counterparts of these lights are mounted on the aircraft, just as I described earlier. These lights, known as the approach lights, are for the landing signal officer who stands on the carrier deck, providing guidance to the pilot during final approach. By monitoring these lights, the LSO can determine if the incoming aircraft is at the correct speed and angle of attack. Also, the approach lights are an external indication that the landing gear is down and locked. The approach lights flash when the hook bypass switch is in the carrier position and the arresting hook is not down, indicating to an LSO that the hook must be lowered for a carrier arrestment and to ensure that the LSO can see the approach lights clearly, the pilot must turn off the nose gear taxi light during the approach. That's it for today. If you like this type of presentation and would like to see more, please leave a like or comment and don't forget to subscribe. 
Thanks for watching and see you next time.